Elijah Hopkins I uh, want to welcome everybody to the FPCC Buffalo Chasers podcast. Uh, again, I'm Elijah Hopkins, uh, streaming at you live from Fort Peck Community College. Uh, joined uh, per usual with uh, Nexi, Mr. Tommy Christian is in the house, man. So 
Um, it's been a minute, about a month since we've been able to to gather like this and share our pod in a good way. So it's kind of like uh, knock the old dust off, a little rust, and we'll do this in a good way. So um, before we get started, uh, next, can you uh, share some good words, uh, some maybe our philosophy or a prayer, whatever you can help us. Alright, so uh, if you're new to our, our podcast, our humble little podcast here, the Buffalo Chasers podcast, uh, what we try to do uh, is reach out to as many people as we can in our community in a good way to promote uh, Fort Peck Community College. Uh, we want to thank our uh, our Itancha, uh, Evan Gourneau, the president of the college, and our uh, board of directors at the college. They all do outstanding work to promote education. And some Looks of the- like you got war paint on, nephew. Yeah, I'm going to war today. So, oh, I was trying to get out of the way of my window situation. Oh, you're good, you're like, good. Oh, huh, watch that. So, like, what we try to do, um, if, if you're new and you're listening to us, what the heck are these guys talking about? Uh, we're, we're trying to uh, spread some uh, some good words, and uh, we try to feature uh, individuals like uh, Dexie Tommy to, to share some good things and from a cultural perspective <laughs> to share. And so... We have a, a pretty rich history going back for gee, almost a year and a half, two years now. And so yeah. uh, there's a lot of content out there. And so, uh, but we try to promote uh, participation virtually. And so we, we try to recognize some individuals. So I had to go back in the vault and look at who, uh, who gave us some social media love and likes. And I, there's one individual that um, has never uh, been acknowledged before in our podcast. And, uh, her name is, Punky Joe Jackson. So we want to acknowledge her and, and gift her in a good way with a Buffalo Chasers uh, letterman's jacket. So when you rock that sucker, man, you're, you're, you join the ranks of Mr. Christian and others that uh, that have this uh, this value system of, of Fort Peck Community College Buffalo Chasers. So congratulations to her. Can you hear this? Didn't hear nothing. No. I had a, a round of applause. My audio was working right, but. Congratulations uh, to Punky Joe. So Punky, you can come over to Student Services uh, or give us a call, 406-768-6370. Get a hold of Darcy, uh, and we'll hook you up. So I think she lives way over there, other side of Thule in a good way. So we'll even bring it over to Wolf Point if you want to come pick it up, uh, Punky Joe. So uh, with that, um, what do you want to discuss today next? You got some. Oh, uh, oh, that's a two little touch got die channel. I can't. Uh huh. Mushimala, I say, which I shall me a little. But uh, today, you know, uh, I was just thinking about what we were going to talk about and just off the top of my head. Uh, you know, it's a one near to hecha. That what that really translates out in is um, one near to. If you translate it, it means you can see your breath. Hey, eh? I mean, which we refer. Does that make sense, Toshka? Wanea too. You can see your breath means that, and we recall that winter time. Well, in in the winter time when it's cold and chilly, there's lots of uh, things that we do. Life doesn't stop because it's cold out, so we take a lot of our uh, protocols and our, and our uh, ceremony indoors and and all that good stuff and and. Uh, uh, I had an opportunity to participate with uh, uh, the, the Jim Shanley 
library where Lori is over there, Lori Smoker's over there, and she's uh, one of the uh, uh, assistant librarians over there. And, and she wanted to establish a, a meeting with the elders or story time, if you will, with the, with the elders, Gabadu, that's what she called it. And, and in that process, uh, I had an opportunity to go and sit with uh, myself and, of course, my buddy Cheyenne Foot, and, and we shared a little bit of time with uh, the individuals that participated, but it, it was so natural. It, it's such a good setting over there in the library. They had a, a little circle of chairs and, and a circle room, had plants around. It wasn't too bright in there and just kind of calming and stuff. And, and of course, there were some stories being shared by Cheyenne and, of course, myself, and, and it just made us old folks. I, I never thought I'd call myself an old folk, but I am. Uh, so uh, now I, I'm 70 years old. I got into that seven decade thing. So I guess I have to refer to myself as old, but the setting, the way Laurie had it set up, oh man, it was just so dandy. And, and I think it felt so good because it was so, um, culturally appropriate. It, it just fall, fell right in because in the wintertime, you take that advantage of that opportunity to, to share stories, eh? especially like Inktomi stories and various other stories that you have. And, and you share them at times like that. And when people gather around, they do stuff and, and really um, enjoy one another's company. And, and Lori, of course, took it upon herself to understand uh, some of her responsibilities by hosting that. So she provided a meal, had some uh, little treats at the end there. And of course, uh, 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 Watecha, there was lots there. So I Watecha some home and enjoyed the soup while I was watching movies after that. And that happens on Wednesday evening. And oh man, I, I she wanted me to come back this Wednesday, this next Wednesday, but uh, I'm gonna be in um, uh, Canada up there helping out the uh, Sioux Valley Reserve with uh, some stuff. They have a Dakota Winterfest and they have a language conference and stuff like that. So me and Red Wing uh, Thomas will be kind of facilitating that. And then uh, me and Howie Thompson will be doing the powwow. But uh, in that, what that shares with, with us is uh, we have ways of, of conveying some of this stuff, not just through podcasts, but we actually go out and, and visit our, our older folks, uh, the Winook Chalapi, Wichak Chalapi, uh -huh. uh, you visit with them. And then if you choose to go visit with them, uh, the most respectful thing you can do to another person that uh, comes to your home or you go to their home, you, you feed them and you look after them. And so if you go and uh, visit with uh, an elder, an older person, uh, you go over there and, and take them a little something. Take them some bread and some jelly, some crackers, pilot bread, <laughs> and if uh, uh, just and little stuff for soup, eh? Maybe a little bit of hamburger and macaronis and stuff like that. Remember how rations used to be at the powwows? They give you a bag of macaroni, a can of tomatoes, and a little piece of meat that you can cook up. And hey, yeah, you had your own pots and stuff. You'd make a fire and you'd make that. Uh, that macaroni soup. Oh man, that was good stuff. But again, that's what you want to do. And, and again, go visit with your elders, look after them, help them. You can also take advantage of that opportunity to check on them, make sure their health is doing good. Cause a lot of the old folks, they, they won't let you know they're hurting or, or they're in need of anything. They're very dignified, prideful people. And, and, uh, but just go and visit them, uh, and let them know that uh, they're still thought about, they're still cared for. And, uh, they're, they're looked after in that way. But uh, I was really glad that Lori set that up and that's on every Wednesday. And she said, uh, we'll always have food and stuff like that. So I'm going to come and help out. She'll uh, go out and, and take the initiative to invite some older folks to come on and, and, uh, to the library there and, and, and help out. So I thought that was pretty dandy. But also, you know, during the wintertime, as uh, Dakota, Lakota people, Nakona people, uh, we have what they have Kohomini, eh? And uh, that's where we gather together and usually bring your whole family. You get the matriarch there, the patriarch, and then the mom and the dad and, and all the kids. And you kind of sit in your little area, eh? 
And uh, can you just kind of visit and the families next to you and whatnot and go to the others you haven't seen because they're holed up in, in the house because it's cold out. And, uh, and then you um, socialize. Uh, a lot of stories go along with that Gahomani. And long ago, Lila Hehania or Nina Wanangashe, just the men would uh, go into the circle and dance, see? Eh? And uh, not necessarily Gahomani, but it was a war dance that, that they shared. And then in the, in the wintertime, they wanted to um, uh, get involved. And in, it wasn't round dance. It was uh, uh, like uh, the women would stand on the side and just bounce up and down. And the men would still continue uh, coming. Kind of like a, what they call a Omaha. They kind of practice uh, dancing their style and telling their story. And that evolved into... Uh, a couple of people were uh, walking by. Uh, these white people were having a gathering, so they peeked in the window and and they seen uh, uh, the, these white people and these white men and white women. They were dancing together, waltzing, eh? going around waltzing, all that good stuff. And so on their way oh, back over to that Omaha, uh, they they uh, were wishing, oh man, I wish we could have a dance like that and they were wishing like that just to, in a good way and so they went there to that little meeting and the men were practicing dance in the middle here these two old couple come in and they said hey we got uh, uh some songs we'll, we'll share with the with the drift singers but we got this new style of dance that we, we want to share with you and they said, oh what is it oh just watch and see and so uh these old couple got together and there's that certain beat they eh? that Kahomani beat, that, that two-step beat. And, and so these two old couple, they were holding hands and they were dancing the Kahomani. And then uh, when they uh, tease at that drum real hard, then they say, Kahomani, and then everybody turns around. Eh? And just to include a little bit of, get rid of the redundancy of just going around in a circle, they turn around and they keep dancing. And, and they taught them that. And from that, now the, the, the women can participate as well as the men, and they could dance together as a result of the wishes of those two old people that were watching those white people dance. And so they want to dance like that. And Gabado, uh, that, that's where the, the Kahomani evolved from, they said. And then from that, there was the rabbit dance that come out of that, the owl dance, uh, different various types of things. Uh, owl dance goes along with... Uh, the uncle and the auntie, you know, like the uncle would be bragging on his nephew and he'd bite his nephew down and he'd bite the nephew's buddies down and their girlfriends and they'd come down and they'd dance go homely. And uh, the aunties would do the same for, for the, 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 the nieces and they'd bite their buddies down and, and they'd get these young kids out in the center participating in the social activity to help them get, get over that, what the, we'd call, put acting strew. Hey, you ever heard that term, Toshka? Acting true. In other words, don't don't act embarrassed or, or acting kind of that way. And and so that helped them deal with that development to kind of get out in the middle. And then when they got in the middle, after the uncles and the aunties talked so good about them, um, they weren't showing them off per se. What they were doing was they were letting all the people there, as a result of what the auntie or the uncle said good about them. They wanted the people to recognize them, just to see them so they could recognize them. And then and when they were needing something, maybe these are the individuals that took on a lot of responsibility and disciplined themselves to really pursue their purpose and their dedication and, so, and, and through their teachings. And so that's why the aunties and uncles would do that. So they just didn't do that to anybody. Not anybody was able to do that. They, They'd have to be proven and they'd have to be carrying that, that dignity and that honor in a good way on the dance floor. So when they got out there, they weren't showing them off as much as they wanted the audience to recognize them that they, they were developed eh, as young people. And then that made the old people feel good because they knew their cultural value system would go on through these young people because they were actually trying eh, and living a good, good life like that. So. It's kind of like that, and, and then like uh, um, there were dances in Gahomani where where um, the man could not dance with his wife, and the wife couldn't dance with her husband, 
but yet they had to get out there and participate. And what that did, that, that helped uh, the men and the women to get over their jealousy, eh? Because <laughs> Indians are really jealous. Uh, but they had to let their wife go dance with another man, and the wife had to let the husband go dance with another. And then from that, it helped them get rid of their de- jealousy in a good way and, and really have that, that high regard for uh, their partners throughout life, uh, their, their Nihasani or their Hinga, whatever they call it. <laughs> uh, but uh, as they do that, you know, we understand that, you know, our way of life is, is definitely have, has a, 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 a manner in which we choose to live in the wintertime. Winter time, you take on a lot of things. Like you, that's when you make your chinchasha. You don't go pick it until you know it's twenty below or real cold out and there's snow on the ground. You go pick your chinchasha. That, that's a that's a discipline that we do. Uh, you go out and get certain things. Like uh, I remember uh, Cheyenne talking about snaring rabbits. See, eh? and, and the reason you did it in the winter time because you could see their tracks in the snow, eh? and uh, stuff like that. But uh, I thought that was really cool that Laurie, a uh, smoker, took it upon herself as a, a, to, and to invite people to the library, help them get used to it and, and get involved in it and, and, and utilize the library as it was intended. And I thought that was really, really cool. But uh, again, that's something that we do in the wintertime. We have the harmonies, we have gatherings. You know, Tosh got long ago, well, not that long ago, actually. Um, not not everybody would sweat all the time. Eh? Uh, the sweats weren't as prolific as they are now. What they would do in lieu of that is uh, you'd invite these old folks to your house and you'd feed them and you'd give them gifts and then you offer them tobacco and ask them, could you uh, smoke your pipe in my house and kind of smudge it up? And so they'd go there. And through that gathering, they, they'd visit and all that good stuff. It wasn't a holy thing as much as it was a more natural gathering for the sake of what Chekia, eh? Acknowledging your, acknowledging your relatives and, and, and their needs and stuff like that. So these older folks would come and usually bring their wife or their children if they had children and, and you'd feed them. And so your, your, the reciprocity of that indication of respect would work both ways. You'd invite them, they come and uh, watch Chekia for you, uh, and, and then you would take care of them for that evening, and then he would, uh, uh, and or she, he or she would, would pray for and smudge your house. Eh? Not to rid your house of any evil spirits, but to kind of clean it up in preparations for those good things to come there, eh? because we maintain that connection with our spirit world. And a lot of people get misconstrued as it relates to smudging a home. They think that you're getting rid of the ghosts, <laughs> but our grandfathers and grandmothers aren't ghosts. They're actual uh, uh, spirits that, that help us. And, and in that process, some people feel that because of uh, the indoctrination of a, a different value system, you know, a religious one that they get afraid of our own grandfathers and grandmothers not recognizing that they're there to help, not necessarily to scare you or make you feel indifferent, but uh, they're there to, to help you. And, and the older folks would understand that. And so they would come in there and they would smudge the camp, use sage and sweet grass and good things. And they tell you, if we're not here and you want to smudge your house, put some cedar on that stove. And that cedar will make you feel better, in which it does. And uh, it, it has some medicinal effects in it when you smell that scent in that, uh, of that cedar. And they tell you stuff like that. It was really, it's really interesting that long ago, that's how they would deal with that. The families would deal with uh, this involvement or this connection with our spiritual work. They wouldn't necessarily go sweat all the time, eh? because back then, Wood was pretty scarce and, and rocks were kind of hard to get because of our lack of mobility. But now we can get around, do this, do that, get some boys together, get wood, get rock, you know, it's whatever little while. But back in the day, it was just kind of inviting those old folks over, feeding them, taking care of them, gifting them. 
give me a little gas money and then have them pray for you, eh? And so uh, that's kind of that's kind of a different thing that, that I see nowadays. And you do usually do that in the winter time and uh, uh, early in the evening, eh, and stuff like that. Uh, I remember um, way back in the day, uh, uh, my my auntie Eunice Denny. They, they lived right across the road from us. Oh man, they they'd have ceremony at their house almost every week. We'd see all these cars at her house and. Oh man, I said, wonder what the heck's going on over there. And then you hear all this singing and whatnot. But she would have ceremony. She she ran a lot of uh, she helped out a lot of our, our cultural value system. I used to visit with her all the time. And she was one of the, the ones that always called me by my my nickname, eh? She always called me Indian, because that's what I was called when I was young, Indian. And uh, so a lot of my aunts and my uncles that are old. Just only knew me by Indian. They didn't call me Tommy. They called me Indian. One time I come back from Denver and uh, and uh, she said, uh, hey, Indian, I come to work every morning. You come same time as you. And, he's, and, and I always see that you always lock your doors. What do you think? Us Indians are thieves? I said, no, 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 Auntie. No, 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 no. I, the, the reason why I lock my doors is that I want to keep that good man honest. <laughs> she liked that. So she started chuckling and, and uh but that's how you deal with your old people, eh? You don't sit and argue with them or try to prove yourself. You just kind of help them understand that uh, ah, in the contemporary life, it's a little bit different, but you don't offend them either. So in that process, wintertime, that's when it was really family-oriented, real lot of things going on in the family, a lot of communication going on, a lot of people understanding the importance of uh, kind of preparing for that that springtime thing because the big lodge was coming the sundance was coming the ceremonies were going to start going on the outside and stuff like that but uh, winter time also for hunting too the men would always hunt i remember we hunt all the time and, and go spotlighting out there in ash grove where they, where they by the airport there it's no longer there because they have so many houses but boy that was a good hunting area we'd go and uh, we'd eat a lot of deer because they get a lot of deer because that's all we ate. We were kind of pitiful like that, but we sure had lots to eat because uh, old, uh, what's the name, was a good shot, eh? And me, I was uh, what they called, I got him. Old, I got him. Everybody be shooting and I got him. I never did. <laughs> but uh, little stories like that would come out and, and, and uh, we, we'd enjoy that whole process, getting the deer, gutting it. And then of course, uh, the, old, the old folks, uh, uh, kind of cutting that dry meat up, making it real thin. They used to tease. My dry meat is so thin you could see through it. That those old ladies like to brag like that, eh? And then uh, they'd be cutting off those little pieces of fat on that meat that they get, and they throw them in a, in a big old wash tub. And then at the end, after they got all their dry meat cut up, they roast uh, that those uh, that, that little pieces of fat. Eh? We we called it wovo. Yeah, I don't know what anybody else called it, but we called it wozo. And, and so we'd sit there and play cards all night and, and eat roasted uh, little fat. And I guess the, the Mexican call them chicharrones, but uh, we called it wozo. And oh, that was good, man. Indian popcorn, I guess is another word for it. Put a lot of salt on there, get some coffee and play spades all night, eh? <laughs> After you hunt it all, all afternoon or all evening. Back then, it was legal to spotlight, so we could uh, still spotlight and get a get an old uh, 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 headlight from a car and and wrap a a, a cardboard around it and, and hook it up to a battery. <laughs> that was our, our spotlight. Man, it, it worked though, you know, kind of MacGyver to make it work. We couldn't afford anything else, but there was a lot of headlights around, so we kind of made it work for us kind of like that but uh, that's how we got the spotlight and of course uh, back in the day in the winter time we'd uh, enjoy uh, uh, listening to stories about ceremony about medicines stuff like that how you put medicines together the old ladies used to do a lot of that and making medicines and making sure what's going on one of the last people i know that uh um, knew really lots about medicines was old uh, Dallas Four Star. I don't know if you knew him, Tushka, but uh, Dallas, that guy was uh, 
when me and my dad, when my dad would come down from Fort Belknap, he'd always go and meet with Dallas. And of course, they're speaking the language, eh? the Nakona language. And, and uh, they were sharing information. And Dallas always had these medicines on hand. And he'd always share with the old man these medicines that he needed for stuff. My dad even had medicine for seizure. But I never did get a chance to get to get that from him. But he would ha help people that were having seizures. Eh? He could, could help them. And, and uh, a lot of people come and see him for that. But uh, I remember... Um, Rick Redmond came down. He was looking for that medicine, so I sent it to my dad. I don't know if Rick ever got that, but Rick too has since passed away. But uh, he was looking for that stuff too, and and I know my dad had it because I helped him on different occasions. And I wasn't nosy. I wasn't uh, trying to get in his business or anything. So I wouldn't. If he didn't teach me, I wouldn't ask about it. He would just do it. And in most cases, that seizure medicine, my mom would make it eh, for him and then he'd take it in the sweat and smudge it up and he'd make it all good and then he'd let the, he, the person drink it and then it'd be good and, then, and that happened pretty consistently as it relates to some of those folks that were having a hard time with those seizure medicines eh? but uh, yeah wintertime is, is, is a good time it's a time to really kind of collect yourself and get fattened up if you, if you don't go out and hunt or anything like that and, and in the springtime you kind of take all that uh, winter fat off eh? but uh, no that's just kind of a little something that come to mind as a result of Lori and getting uh, the elders together hopefully that takes off that she continues that I, I told her I really enjoyed it and not and I asked her not to get frustrated but just kind of let it happen it'll happen because it's in our blood eh? I believe in genetic memory those sorts of things are just natural with us. So we'll just naturally congregate. And, and especially the food that they, they, had, they had good food, had good biscuits and good soup and, and uh, cookies and oh man, coffee and tea, I think she had. And, but uh, good on Wednesday evening, she has that. What do you think, Toshka? What, what you got on your mind? I know you got something going. Oh, no, I just like listening to you guys. I, was, I remember listening to um, Earl. Uh, bullhead when he'd come on this and visit with us about uh, that uh, owl dance. I get it mixed up which one, owl or rabbit dance. One of them, it teaches uh, thing, um, the, the couples to not yeah. be uh, now easy. Yeah, so like that that was yeah, a, yeah. a good, uh, I guess, teaching, I guess. And the other thing, I remember it was, uh, you know that one story, that uh, Wanangash story about uh, the origin of snagging. We could maybe talk about that no <laughs> no we all know that but the, i was thinking when you're talking you know like a lot of the stuff that we do in these programs Shio -tanka. Shio -tanka. Shio -tanka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot of the our program we're, we're trying to incorporate at the college and our podcast and stuff that i think you're referring to Lori's that's doing what she's doing at the library and that what um samantha is doing with our, our tip wick programming like yeah. buffalo hunt all that type of stuff um, in a roundabout way, what we're trying to say is what we're trying to, um, from my perspective, what we're doing. And I know this is what you're saying too. It's like, we're, we're trying to, uh, re reestablish our, uh, um, what would you call it? Like our cyclical, uh, patterns, our behavior, things that we yeah, would yeah. do, like whether that's Buffalo hunting. And then now you talk about one year too, the time to like, to gather because, um, what, what I'm trying to share with my kids is that like we we do things, we gather medicine or we get this food for the buffalo to to prepare for the yeah. long walk through winter. You hear this phrase a lot when you go to like ceremonies or different people because the winter was hard, Hana. Yeah. Like it was like people starved to death. And I don't think people realize that it was really difficult. And so like, we always have this Bapa and this Wasna that we try and uh, prepare and make. And it was kind of like, a, it really <laughs> saved us. And so I think about stuff like that. And then I, I think about like, when I, I'm listening to Nexi talk here about um, the, the old people, when they share stories, there's a lot of, that's that opportunity for those dances, but also the, like, uh, what do they call it? Ohunkaka, Oyakapi, those yeah, old yeah, people. Yeah. Where oh. they learn about <laughs> where you learn about the um the history of your your tribe or your people or your family history 
you know, all those different things. So yeah. that's because. Yeah. Yeah. That's when what was, that's all about. Yeah. When, when I was listening to, because one of the things I really like to do is to go visit or record elders as well. Right. Yeah. Talk about language, yeah. culture. And, um, there was a lady that lives in Wolf Point. Her name's Barbara Birdsbill. I sat down and visited with oh, her yeah. a good couple hours and, uh, she shared some really good things in the language. What she told me, she said, yeah. So basically what that means is, is in a, like a polite way is like, um, the, the, the younger kids today, they don't understand. Right. So, um, I, the, in the win, we have an opportunity if we can reestablish these things that you're talking about next i'm all for that then we give them a yep. platform maybe we could replicate yeah. something like that in wolf point or because sometimes they, they have a hard time traveling all the way to poplar because we have all yeah. these communities you know and and then there, there's so many little, little like uh treasures of information that they'll share you know yeah. as her talk and i think I, I shared it with you next when she was talking about when she was little grew up in, in fort Kipp, her her grandma's sister raised her yeah, like an Ahana Indian, you know, from a long yeah. time ago, only spoke uh, Dakota. And she oh. would talk about like these little things, like the, 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 one of the things she wanted me to walk away from our conversation understanding, or she wanted to share. So I didn't say, I just sat and listened, but she talked about uh, what the, the, what her, her grandma did when they would go and visit these other elders in Fort Kip was this idea of sacrifice. Right. And so like, there was this, this old, this old lady that lost her her child that, that died her at a younger age and this 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 old kushi when she was little you know it's like and i don't it's a practice i'd never really heard of we don't do it anymore but she said she cut her the tip of her finger off yeah and, and put it in that uh the, the grave and so those are the types of things she she talked about how like it's hard it was very different back then but there, there was many like funny things to talk. That was a more serious thing, but like, I think making a connection with elders and talking with them, super important. So that's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and it's understanding that like, we're trying to establish that, like from the, the, the catalyst of, of, of our nation, a eh, popular, but we have six communities across the reservation. They can establish those in those particular communities. You get, get some people that we just want to cook a meal and, and invite elders over do that you know it doesn't have to be just in poplar but you can take the initiative and go out and do it on our own in wolf point and uh, fraser and um, riverside brockton whatever the case may be eh? and just establish a little night like that where you're just going to gather you're just going to get that omaha kind of come together and and practice if you want you get a drum there they could practice singing and you would chug a lot they could stand behind them help them out practice singing and practice visiting <laughs> but those things go on in the winter time eh? and then uh the, these sorts of things that this history that we have we become so closed in and, and now we need to kind of bring back some of that that, that socializing that we, we were used to and it doesn't have to come together and be done in such a formal way just come together, eat a meal, sing some songs, you know, visit, gossip, man. Holy gray. And that's why I got one of my relatives coming. I'm going to go see him up in Canada. And, oh, that guy could really gossip. I like to listen to him, man. He can really tell some good ones. And, and But, again, but it makes you feel good, eh? You know, wash tail, wash tail, kind of like that. It makes me feel good, and I really like it, and stuff like that. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, say what what he said but uh i i definitely enjoy that part of our relationship as we come together in a good way and uh, uh that's what we need to do that's what we need to get back to is visit and, and, and help one another to understand the importance of uh that's indian indian fied socializing eh? reservified socializing and you know, boil a potato boil throw a piece of meat in there and uh, have grandma make some of those uh, good old cookies she used to make or sugar cookies or uh, I don't even know what chocolate chips were back in the day but <laughs> I thought they looked like flies eh? here those are raisins <laughs> in the fry bread 
and stuff like that, you know. And then the women would would bring fry bread, and you could tell the difference. You could even tell who cooked it, eh? even without knowing who cooked it. You could taste it. Oh, this is what's her name's fry bread, and they were very well known for. That's how close we were. And, and even like today, some people that cook fried bread, you, you know who cooked it because they're so good at it. Eh? And those ladies like to have an opportunity to kind of share that with people and let them see, uh, this is what I was taught by my grandma. This is what, this is how I cook this. This is how I cook. And that's what women talk about, recipes and stuff like that. And men talk about, tell big old lies about how big that fish was they caught or they said they caught or how how big that rack was on that deer that got away. Remember that one? <laughs> but uh, but just sitting down and, and relaxing and letting the kids know each other, know one another, and, and uh, enjoying uh, their company. And then the, the grandmas, especially at Gohomenes or gatherings like that, the grandmas would start pointing out to the young people, that one there is your cousin. So don't be trying to go out with him or don't be trying to go out with her. And this is how you relate. And she'd explain all that. But they had time to do that back then. Eh? And then you wouldn't get all this intermarriaging and all that good stuff because the grandma, the matriarch, would, would let them know. this: These are your blood relatives. This is your hunka relative. And you, you don't uh, go with your own blood relatives. Eh? Stuff like that. And they kind of take an opportunity to help the young people realize that the uh, um, they need to be respectful. Never run in front of an old person. You always go behind them and don't talk when you're when somebody's talking. You know, just little basic. But they wouldn't tell them. They would just let them know that's not the behavior that they, is expected of you as being a part of this tiwate. Hey, okay? you see. And so the kids would take that on and they would behave not because they wanted to behave, but because. They were representing not only themselves, but their family, and in a lot of cases, their tribe, and in another lot of cases, the community in which they came from. And so you, you could always recognize the, 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 the growth of, of uh, uh, the child based on its, its, uh, its influence. And usually it comes from the matriarch and the patriarch, the grandma and the grandpa. And uh, then the uncles and the aunts would follow up with those, that guidance with the teachings. Uh, you know, the, the, the linear teaching is for the mind. Eh? Our abstract learning that's experiential is for the heart. Eh? You see? And then once we bring those together, we can have an understanding of how important it is to achieve or aspire to that sense of balance. Eh? And so that's what was provided. Uh, the, the, the grandfathers and, and the grandmothers would always provide that that direction from you, for you, for your heart, the good feelings, the emotion. And then the uncles and aunts would try to help you understand the importance of that through that linear process and, and teach you for your intellect. Eh? And, and that's where we're coming from. We know what was going on. We know what, what was happening. We know what we was aspiring to and for the sake of that balance. And then the standards come about, come to us differently. And so we tried to make that adjustment. But uh, Again, we were so uh, naturally motivated that uh, we didn't want to go against uh, um, the animal world, the plant world, the insect world, kind of like that, the Wamakashka. Uh, didn't want to go against them, so we kind of maintained in a quiet way uh, the way we believed. We didn't really argue about it, defend it, or try to fight anybody about it. We just lived it. And usually, uh, uh, as we continued to, in, in a deliberate manner and how we talk, we didn't always have something to say about everything. Eh? And so the, the, the difference that existed there was, was definitely an, uh, an understanding. It gives the, our non-Indian relatives an opportunity to understand how and why we did these things. We weren't ignorant. We weren't stupid. We, we, we just didn't want to offend them being disrespectful to them. And so uh, stuff like that, that uh, we're trying to convey. And through these, these little activities in the winter, there's not a better opportunity to convey them. Because, you know, like uh, that meeting we had with Lori, there was one non-Indian young girl there. Oh, man, she really loved to listen to stuff like that, eh? Because she never experienced before. 
And of course, the reason she liked it because it expanded her horizons. It opened her mind to understanding the importance of our culture and our value system. And, and I think anybody that's involved in stuff like that, understanding the intellect, the linear is dealing with your mind. But once you look at it from an Indian perspective, you involve your heart and you bring them together, the beauty in that way of life. Eh? And uh, we're trying to convey that without, we don't want to infringe or impose on anybody else's right to exist, but we'd sure like to help them feel better too. And you, you think about it, Toshka, you know, that, that, that good thing up here, if you have good thoughts, boy, that sure gets rid of a lot of sickness and illness, eh? Just from your thought process, because the body will heal itself. And people don't understand how and why we could maintain a healthy lifestyle in spite of all the negative influence that are, uh, that are, are, are on a suppressed people, oppressed people like us. But yet we worked through it and got through it and uh, usually on our own. And, and so stuff like that, that, that we don't share, we don't talk about openly, but we live it. And the beauty in that life is, is achieving that linear perspective as well as that abstract and, and developing uh, a path that is, uh, has some sense of balance to it. Eh? Does that sound cool or what? Heck yeah, it sounds really good, you know. Um, so there's a few other things I want to just quickly throw out there. Sure, just take your time, don't rush. Yeah, uh, one was, um, I believe this weekend or next, definitely next week, there's a delegation from Fort Peck tribes uh, I believe the chairman of the tribe is going to go and then Diane Yupi and there's uh, some of these interns are going to be going out to the Smithsonian, uh, the Indian Museum in Washington, D.C. And they're starting the um, initial process to repatriate or I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, that's what I identify these um, in, in, indigenous remains, I guess you would say they were Assiniboine or Sioux people, mm -hmm. actual bodies. Yeah. Uh, actual regalia weaponry uh from ehana from like 1800s you yeah. know uh and so it's they've been locked up over there for however many decades you know from the smithsonian and so i think it's really cool our, our listeners or viewers or whoever should understand that uh fort peck tribes is really doing uh some really cool things to bring those back here yeah. That's it. They're not actually bringing them back this week, but they're doing the initial, like the, those regulatory issues that they have to go through. Starting the, the process, yeah. Starting that process to bring them back. And so I know the invitation was sent out to uh, actually Tommy here. He's got other obligations. Uh, he's needed elsewhere. But those are the things that I think um, that are important to kind of like highlight at least a little bit. Um, I want people to recognize those. There's going to be things coming down the pike where they'll actually bring them here and they'll probably be doing some ceremonial things, kind of bless them, bring them back home. Right. And so I thought that was really cool to hear that they're, they're doing that. Um, other thing is, you know, we have some other cool work in addition to what uh, they're doing at the library is tip with grant. I believe they have a, a, some workshop series for like BAPA workshops, yeah. Like, yeah. like doing some cool things. And what I noticed when you were talking all, all this, when, when we gather, right. Like, there's this thing that um, I think we, we, we all know it. It's like um, we build resiliency, community resiliency when we come together and we work together on things. And so when I was listening uh, to my wife, Samantha, talk about, because, you know, when you have, you're, you're married, you're a couple, you talk about things, right? Like, how did your workshop go that she's invested into this thing? And so just one of the takeaways was that there was usually it was it's open to anybody, but usually it's women that are coming to these workshops uh, and bringing like maybe their nieces, some of them are employees at the college, some of them are just community members, open to anybody. But when they'll, they'll show up, they'll talk about the traditional method of making dry racks and what that looks like, but also incorporating modern things, right? Like uh, there's a modern dehydrator if you want, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can, but <laughs> also if you want to do it, Hana, we're going to, but that's up to you decide if you want to yeah. do it. And so, but what she was <clears throat> thing she was sharing with me was that these some of these kushis when they start working with each other they they get over themselves right being steward as you like to say so like next thing you know a couple hours into this workshop by the end of the day everybody's relaxed because they had some food they visited with each other they're comfortable next thing you know they're starting to share things yeah. the, the auntie over here was like you know what 
my mom or my grandma, this is how they actually would, would make this wasna. And I remember, and, and, and they're, they're, they're like reviving their memory of, one, of their youth when their, their grandmas used to do things. And I thought that was so cool because that's really one of at the, the heart of what that grant is, is they're trying to do. But what we're really trying to do at the college and, and you and me specifically, as far as like connecting people resources, yeah. but I noticed they're they're already doing it themselves and it's unconsciously they're just doing yeah. it. I thought that was really cool. That is, um, you know that that what what uh, you know your wife is representing is what they call food sovereignty, and we really need to start looking into that and understanding the importance of some of the resources we have available here. You know, I'd hate to be in in um, uh, living in the urban area and there's a food shortage, Jay. Eh? Because out here, we all have to do is go out and shoot a deer. <laughs> Come Grab my fishing it. pole. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but we need to start recognizing some of the resources. We can grow our own food. We can grow our own medicines. We can grow our own uh, uh, vegetables, everything. But that's becoming more and more uh, relevant to this way of life. And I think we really need to start pushing that aspect to our young people to help them understand that uh, uh, we're not trying to be hippies or like tree huggers or anything like that, but it's going to become uh, something that's going to be ultimately they're going to become responsible for and, and how to harvest a deer, how to harvest one of our buffalo, how to harvest uh, the, the, the corn and the wheat and, and whatever else, the turnips and various other things, uh, because that's to me, that's food sovereignty. And what what better way to. Uh, get your your consumption is as pure as that they eh? there's no drugs no nothing going into these these are pure they're natural all that good stuff and you know what's going in your system then and so in all these things that's where it's going to become important because all those folks in the city they're not going to have a chance to really do that because they get everything from the store eh? you know last time i went hunting Chris, i don't know I went hunting for a turkey on Thanksgiving. And when I used to celebrate Thanksgiving, holy Christ, I found one. Shot that sucker. I don't know how many of those shoppers jumped in Albertson's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He almost gave my heart attack. <laughs> but uh, but no, um, you know, stuff like that, that. That's what we're trying to convey without telling them. But again, we were really kind of living it and say, yes, we do live like that. People didn't know we even spoke our language or even continued to maintain our cultural uh, ceremonial aspect of our lives. They, a lot of people don't know we still do that. Almost every week something's going on here on the res. Eh? And uh, we need to help our young people understand that, that some of the young ceremonial people that have been working with, oh, they're doing a good job. They're just taking it on and just running with it if you will not getting in a hurry but just taking it all in and really doing it to even better than some of the us old folks did it because they have the energy to do that eh? and so that's what really makes us feel good and through them uh this this legacy if you will that has been here since the beginning of time will continue to live on and that's how you make old people feel good oh it's still here yes we still do that yes we still like when you spoke with Barbara, Barbara and Pearl took care of me when I was on the council, man. I was on it for 16 years, and I think both of them were about the same amount of time. But the, I used to sit in the middle of them. They, oh, they took care of me. I thought my name was Inila. Inila. <laughs> I thought that was my Indian name. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's stuff like that that we need to start acknowledging. I'm, I'm glad to hear a lot of these things are going on. And the catalyst to this or the focal point to this is the college. Think about it, Neff, because it's a, an educational uh, center for these things, eh? So these community things can be established out. out in, you know, that's what I was thinking. A satellite uh, program out in Fraser, a satellite program out in Brockton, right from the college, just for the sake of these land-based teachings to help them understand that in, in, in a good way. But, uh, just another thought that I have for the future. Eh? Yeah, heck yeah. Um, and so I, a lot of these workshops, sometimes, even though it's food sovereignty, there's they're still incorporating other things, right? Like your language, oh, you can learn language. 
yeah. and then you, that's an opportunity to, to hear other stories. Like even the other day, I was listening to uh, Jerome, Mr. Jerome. <laughs> He's, he's schooling me up on uh, rose hip. Rose hip, yeah. he said it's pound for pound has the most vitamin C of anything yeah. in the world, right? And then, but even though it's something as simple, it grows around everywhere, but that's something that we could just start incorporating into our diet. Anyway. They said it's good for diabetes too. I don't know if that's true, but that's a lot of the Lafia we chash up would share with me. It's good for diabetes, that and Saskatoon's June berries. Eh? Yeah, so a lot to learn, never-ending stuff to learn within our culture, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. So uh looks like we're at the top of the hour. I'll do a quick plug for AHEC Student uh, con- oh. Conference, which is in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, and it's scheduled for March 4th through the 7th. And so quick plug, every Wednesday at noon at Student Services at the main campus, I'm going to try doing a... Um, a webinar for or a, a zoom meeting so that we can get anybody that's not here or any of you remote students you could check it out kind of learn what it is you, know, you can participate we're trying to to gather gather all of our students that can represent the heart of buffalo chaser nation we can send that delegation over to uh albuquerque because the ahec student conference is almost kind of like the olympics of tribal colleges right we send our our biggest and brightest stars all over there to represent the college and then uh with the idea being that we you come back with those trophies those trophies oh. i wouldn't call it trophy trophies of war but the the trophies of competition where we, oh. we try and uh, uh recognize students for your, your accomplishments and some of it's academic academic some of it is uh more like fun type things uh recreational there, there's archery competition which i'm one of the coaches for there's a powwow down there about three, four days of just tribal college education goodness. And so oh. if, if you want to be a part of that, I don't know if you do, but if you do come over to these meetings, we got some soup, we feed you guys up and then we woke nog. And then you get to hear some, some juicy gossip from some of these ladies that work over here, man, you'll be in the know about who's dating who and all this good stuff. So if that's uh, of interest to you, um, check it out. Student services every Wednesday, but that's right around the corner. So but that, that's all I have. Do you have anything else you want to share with us? Uh, you tell them when they talk about AHEC to send Uncle Tommy to Albuquerque for AHEC. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they say Uncle or Auntie Slayer is going to be on his way. <laughs> but, oh, huh. Watch it. Uh, Pete, oh. i uh, again, beautiful uh, words you're sharing, podcast. Thank everyone for joining us today. Um, oh, you stoked. Hey, <laughs> 